You can't always get what you want But if you try sometimes You just might find You get what you need XT Oh yeah You can't always get what you want But in this case we're going to get a 6500 XT So stick around baby Okay guys so yeah You've probably clicked on the video and gone, Oh, what's this idiot going to say about the 6500 XT? Is he going to say it's crap like everyone else? Is he going to say it's good like some kind of some kind of outcast? Well, come on, guys. This is PC tech. Lots of things are considered to be black and white, you know, easy to delineate. But oftentimes in PC tech, as well in life, it is a matter of shades of grey. And we're going to see, is the 6500 XT any good? Um, which is ooh, spicy topic, um, but we're going to be putting it together in a, in a system that does make sense for this graphics card and something where you can actually offer a full PC system at a decent price, which is something we haven't had for a long, long time. So welcome to Concept Soup. This is a PC building tech channel uh, where we like to go through some lovely builds that we do here, talking about the performance, talking about our decision making when it comes to PC tech. But we're going to go through a parts list. We're going to go through a build montage. We're going to have a little chat about the performance as well. And we're going to see whether it is actually sensible to pick up a 6500 XT in what is now March of 2022. So stick around and I promise you'll have a wild, wild time. This video is brought to you in partnership with jcpccustoms.com, purveyors of fine gaming PCs. But why buy from JCPC Customs? There are three pillars to what we do. Enthusiast-grade build quality, stunning good looks that you are proud to display, and all at a fair price. But how do you get your hands on one? We've got three methods. We have the ready-to-go PC section. These are PCs that are already built, ready to ship out with optimized specifications. So excellent for the most fuss-free experience. Experience. For those that want to spec out themselves, you can use our configurator listing. And this is where you can choose some lists of parts that we have available to us. But for the most granular experience, the truly custom experience, you can use our custom spec service. And this is where you fill out our Google form. You can choose every component, even down to the model number. And any other accoutrements that you also want with the PC can be accommodated here. So thank you very much for watching and head to jcpccustoms.com to learn more. Wait, 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 don't go anywhere just yet. Quick one, I've got a discount code for you for jcpccustoms.com. Use code YTFREE at checkout. You get free shipping on anything on the website. That includes PCs, so that's like a £30 saving right there. Anyway, on with your regularly scheduled content. Thanks for sticking with us through the sponsor spot there. So now we're going to go through a parts list and then go for a build montage. So we're working around the graphics card today, which is the Sapphire Pulse Radeon RX 6500 XT 4 gig. And this actually is pretty much the only budget graphics card left at a new, in new condition in the time of filming, which is sort of, you know, end of February 2022. It's £200 at the time, which is, for this kind of level of performance, it's a bit more than you'd like. You'd probably want this more down towards £150, really. But that is the market we're living in. And to get a half-decent graphics card for 200 quid is actually not too bad um, in the current market. But the key thing we need to work around here is the bandwidth limitations that you have on this graphics card. I'm not talking about the 4 gigabytes of VRAM, though that is a little bit of a limitation. Um, but for 1080p, that should be fine. What I'm talking about is the PCIe interface, and this is what lets the motherboard talk to the graphics card. Most graphics cards have a, an X16 or maybe an X8, which means that there's plenty of availability for data to be transferred between the system and the graphics card. Um, and that means that if you're to run it on an older board, which has PCIe Generation 3, you wouldn't really notice any slowdowns. But with um, this graphics card running on an X4, you've got quite a cut down sort of window for your data to go through. Um, and that's why it's really important that we run this at its maximum PCIe spec, which is PCIe Generation 4. If we start putting this graphics card on an older Gen 3 board, 
we're going to have all kinds of problems like stuttering, slowdowns, all these kind of things. So you make sure we're on a PCI Generation 4 platform. And that is why our CPU today is the i5-11400F because this gets us into that PCI Generation 4 ecosystem whilst being cost effective. At the time, 12100Fs weren't available and the motherboards for them were very expensive. So going for an i5-11400F gave us that sort of budgety feel, but actually it's it's more of a mid-range CPU, to be honest, with six cores and 12 threads and a decent clock speed. Um, it's actually really nice for some sort of esports gaming as well. Cooling this, we have the Arctic Alpine 12. It doesn't really cool too much better than the stock cooler. It looks a little bit nicer. Motherboard-wise, we have the MSI Z490-A Pro. reason we went for this one is because we want Generation 4. Now, the Z490A Pro does have Gen 4. But the like B460s and the more budget chipsets, those those kind of things, well, one wouldn't support the 11400F, but also would have um, PCI Generation 3 on it. So make sure we have something with PCI Gen 4. The Z490A Pro was about the same price as the B560 motherboard, so why not go for the slightly nicer motherboard here? Great VRMs, really good performance. You could even put i9s onto this um, motherboard, to be honest. It's actually a very nicely put together board, but the price has come down because it's a little bit of an older chipset now but still absolutely fantastic for our needs. Our memory today, we've got 16 gigs, that's two lots of eight, DDR4 3200, Crucial Ballistics, uh, the classic RAM that you see here on the channel. We use it over and over again because it's highly, highly compatible. Storage-wise, we've got a 500 gigabyte Keoxia Xeria NVMe M2 SSD, which is plenty for storing you know, four to eight games, depending on size, um, which is plenty for most people. We've already talked about the graphics card, so let's move on to the case. This is the MSI Mag Vampiric 010. Terrible name. Why do they just call it, have one called the Vampiric and then have one called something else? Don't put this 010 on the end. Um, but anyway, don't worry. It's a nice cheap case, basically. It's a nice cheap case with tempered glass on the side with okay build quality. This isn't a case that's going to set your world on fire. For instance, it doesn't have a front mesh or anything like that, but it does have these cutouts on the side, so that'll allow a bit of airflow through. But thankfully, because our components aren't super heavy on the power draw, having a slightly worse case in terms of airflow actually isn't really going to matter very much. So it makes it an okay choice um, for this kind of build. Power supply wise, we have the 600 watt EVGA W2, so it's just a regular 80 plus 600 watt unit. I would usually advise people at least go for a bronze, but actually these EVGA units, I've had quite um, good experiences with them, so I'm happy to use them in this case, and they were on a fantastic deal at the time. Our Wi-Fi, we have uh, a little add-in card, so this is just um, uh, an AC 1200 megabits per second PCI card, then we use a USB Bluetooth dongle for the Bluetooth, um, and there we go. Absolutely fantastic. We've got all of our parts here, so let's put them together and see what kind of results we get. See you on the other side, darling. For a budget build, do you know what? I actually think this looks pretty tidy. Um, you don't want to spend too much on looks when you're in the budget end because you are taking money away from your performance in most cases. But actually here, I think this is pretty tidy looking um, for such a low priced build. So I would, you know, I'd be happy having this on my desk if I was somebody that was on a bit of a budget. Um, I think the RGB effects look decent. Um, you can control the fans and everything using the software on the motherboard. The front RGB on the case, you have to use the button, um, which is a little bit unfortunate. But hey-ho. Okay, so we've seen how it looks. 
we like the look that we've got for this budget build it's not too bad at all but you might be a little bit more interested in the performance so let's do that right now so why don't we start off with some temperature testing as always on the channel we use our dual testing methodology so we have our cpu temperature test which runs at the same time as the graphics temperature test that gets the maximum heat running through the system on the cpu we use prime 95 we run this for 30 minutes on a uh, on the mixed sort of blended stress test mode this is really good for testing system stability it pretty much always flags up any ram problems as well which is an added bonus and it just makes sure the pc is not going to crash under high loads you get high temperatures with this so don't don't be shocked when you see temperatures up in the 90s because this program really is the kind of program that's going to give you those temperatures even on quite a nice setup sometimes we go for the maximum temperature which is obviously the max temperature we see and then we have the equilibrium temperature which ignores those half second spikes that you often get with prime 95 so talking about our maximum cpu temperature 89 degrees c which considering this is a, a stock style cooler actually isn't too bad um, um i would be somewhat happy with this performance and really again this is an unrealistic load where this kind of temperature is pretty much plum normal equilibrium temperature which is actually a, a pretty close approximation of what you'd be getting in a cpu heavy gaming scenario and this is where we're up at 74 degrees which means there's plenty of room before any thermal throttling is going to occur so actually quite Quite a good result here, considering we're using that kind of boxed cooler um, rather than you know a fancy air cooler or a fancy liquid cooler. Video card wise, maximum temperature was 64 degrees C, which is pretty much what I expected. I expected this to run quite cool because these graphics cards are cut down quite a lot. A lot of the power hungry components that you get on the higher end stuff you're not going to be seeing on here. So 64 degrees is pretty much about what I would expect here. Now moving on to some benchmark tests. Heaven Benchmark is one of our favorites and we've got an FPS average of 77 with a score of 1938, which yes, this keeps it in that entry level sort of category, but this isn't awful. This is on the extreme preset. You're still getting over 60 FPS, which is not actually too bad at all. I think this would put it a little bit above a GTX 1650, for example. So you really, if I was going to compare this to an Nvidia card, it's it's around the level of a 1660 or a 1660 Super um, in terms of its performance. Let's have a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider running at 1080p on the highest preset, and our average FPS was bang on 60 FPS, um, which makes it just shows. Earlier when I was saying this would be a good 1080p build, and you can even play games on the highest presets. You know, granted it's a couple of years old at 1080p, still getting 60 FPS experience, so it's not. It's not all doom and gloom, guys. It's not too bad at all. But benchmarks are one thing. How about some actual real-life gaming performance? So hooking us up with a bit of the old Fortnite Battle Royale here, and we're playing on uh, lowest settings with max draw distance, which is what I would call the competitive settings. And um, yes, indeed, we are playing at full 3D resolution at 1080p. Um, and you can see our average FPS is pretty nice. You know, we're getting over 220 FPS pretty con you know, pretty considerably here. So, you know, even if you've got that nice high refresh rate monitor, you're still going to be having a fantastic gaming experience on games like Fortnite um, without absolutely breaking the bank. So it just goes to show all these really posh builds and everything. You don't always need them depending on the game that you are playing. Um, what's really bumping this FPS up nice and high is that strong CPU that we've got. The i5-11400F is doing a really nice job here of keeping that frame rate nice and stable. You see our 1% lows around 130 here as well, and that's actually really good. Um, I imagine if we put this on a PCIe Generation 3 board that we would actually be struggling here with the 1% lows, but thankfully on our PCIe Generation 4 platform, we're having no troubles in that regard whatsoever. So, how about a bit of Apex Legends? So here we are playing a bit of Apex Legends, going to town with the bow check, um, and getting around 140 FPS, you know, average throughout the game. And again, this is pretty nice. I think this is actually a pretty nice performance considering the price that we're paying. Um, I would certainly be happy with this. Um, you got, you know, you got your 1080p, 144 hertz monitor, or whatever. You're going to be having a really nice smooth experience and something that's still definitely a step up from the 60 hertz console experience so i was pretty happy with this i was actually expecting it to be a little bit worse um, in both games but i was pleasantly surprised um, i think because of all the negative press that this graphics card has had um, it really does make it a tough sell but really 
When you're playing your games at 1080p, especially your popular esports titles, you don't need to break the bank and something like this is a really, really good choice. And this particular build, I was surprised about how nice it looked, um, which is an added bonus indeed. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. I want to hear your comments about the 6500 XT below. Do you still hate it? I mean, yeah, sure, I wouldn't put one in my own PC, but I'm not in this budget category. And if I was saying that I want a PC, I want it with brand new parts, and I want to be spending, you know, £800 or less, how are you going to do better than this? I mean, that that's the problem I have with this argument is... Fine, it's not exactly what you wanted out of AMD for this price point. What else is there to buy at this price point? It doesn't make any sense to do this. Sure, you could go out and buy something used, something like, you know, maybe a GTX 1660 used, you might get it, but you're getting, you know, maybe the same performance, really, and you're spending the same amount of money. It doesn't really make any sense. So if you can find something better for 200 quid, then be my guest, but good luck is all I have to say. And that's why... Whilst 6500 XT isn't an ideal situation, it's kind of reflective of the market we're in, and at least it gives people on budgets an actual option to go for. And I think that's where this argument online has come from. People that are going, listen, it's something versus, hang on, this isn't good enough. And really, again, the truth is somewhere in between. Um, but rant over, comment, subscribe, like, share, do all my YouTube begging stuff, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye now.